So, here's where I'm at rig-wise. Uh, it's been a long time since you guys have seen this setup. Like, I mean, a year. Probably more than a year than you guys have seen this completed setup. Uh, I still have my Sirius EQG 183 MC Pro with the ZWO filter wheel, 5 drawer. I got an Ellen Hans L Pro, and I think a Bader Sky or Moon Glow filter, something like that. Because I'll switch this setup out, throw it on the Newt, which I'm actually selling the Newt, by the way. And uh, I'll be I'll do like planetary and visual and whatnot with it. Um, field flattener, of course, 224 MC with the 32 unit guide, and this bad boy right here, the ASI Air. This thing is awesome. Everything is controlled by my phone, no more laptop. I still have a freaking chicken nest of wires and just a disaster here. But otherwise, it's coming together quite well. And this has been the rig that I've used, that I use every night. Um, I haven't really imaged with the new. That's mainly why I'm selling it, just because my mount, this poor series can't handle it. Like I'm actually using fake weights, like not actual counterweights on the bottom here when I have the newt on and the mount is dying. So no more newt for this guy until I upgrade mount, but I'm actually thinking about getting an edge. So we'll hear about that later. So we got some good news. Uh, the wind is actually starting to die down. It's dying down significantly. Uh, I don't know if you can see these trees. Not so much wavy anymore. So that's pretty cool. So tonight as well, uh, I'm gonna try to give you guys screen recordings of the ASI Air app and uh, what I'm seeing, what I'm working with when I run the application to uh, image. And it's a really easy to use uh, app for it. And obviously it's on iOS and Android. Uh, I have an iPhone 13, so I use that for you know all of my imaging things. As long as my phone is charged, I can image. I don't have to worry about holding out a laptop table, power cord for the laptop, make sure the Wi-Fi is good. Like everything connects to my phone. The ASI air emits its own Wi-Fi, makes it the perfect portable setup. And I want to say something too. Uh, I saw in my statistics that over 60% of my viewers are returning viewers. So I want to say thank you to all of you who return to watch after the months of, you know, month gaps in between videos. It's really cool you guys come back and hopefully appreciate what I do and what I'm showing you guys. Uh, this hobby truly gave me something to look forward to in all seasons, really. Um, unfortunately, the weather doesn't really help, you know, in the winter and fall time, but I used to be a huge just summer person. I love summer, but now I'm starting to get a little anxious for the fall season, start to see Orion rising, Pleiades, you know, and the Pleiades are actually starting to rise around three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. And uh, Orion just breaks the horizon right before sunrise. So we're getting to that point. But uh, yeah, all that aside, I really want to say thank you guys to the ones who return and watch the videos. Uh, it means a lot to me and uh, it's cool to see you guys enjoy what I do, hopefully. So uh, without further ado, here we go. <laughs> guy right here the most important piece of the puzzle oh. <laughs> if you lose him you lose the ASI air because this little card has all of the information system information all the data everything this thing needs to run so that's a big no-no if you lose that just rem just remember that and so this guy you can see a little slot here with all my wires it's kind of hard to get in here but he just slides in bada boom like so card goes in the slot Turn her on. So yeah, we are all polar aligned. I know you can't really see anything because it's starting to get dark. But we are now just anxiously awaiting complete nightfall so I can get uh, on my target, focused, and ready to rip. So right here is the UI for ASI Air. And what I'm about to do here is pull up Vega in a live video. So this is doing repeat frames of the star Vega in my point of view, and I'm making sure it's not drifting, make sure my focus is good after I focus with the Batonov mask. And now that's the uh, that's basically the screen that you see when you're imaging. And coming up here, I'm going to get my target set, which is SH2162, and uh, otherwise known as the Bubbling Nebula. And this encapsulates basically the whole area around it. And what I'm doing here is I chose that target, and now my mount is slowing to it. Unfortunately, I didn't get video of it, but you can see right here, mount is slewing to position. You can see the RA and deck coordinates moving. 
And what this does, I have it set so when it reaches the target, it will take a five second exposure, send it back, it will plate solve it, and then it will tell the mount, okay, I'm, you're, the target is either centered or it's off, and then it will keep slewing to that position, to the proper position, every time it shoots an exposure and a plate solve, just to ensure that the target is in the center. So you can see right there, validate center or not, solving the target, detected 130 stars, uncentered, so now the mount is moving again, try to get it all zeroed in. So now it's doing another five second exposure after it's slewed. And I believe on this one, it actually centered it. And then it'll give you a confirm option. Yep, confirm two seconds and boom. And now it's gonna show you the exposure that it just took just to show you that, yeah, we know what we're doing. We got a plate solved and centered. So you can see right here, boom, there's bubble nebula. And obviously it's just five second exposure. Can't see much, but you can see a little bit of the bubble. So I'm getting everything set here. I'm using my crosshair to make sure all my stars are centered. Got, uh, you can even annotate your exposures, which is awesome. So at this time I am on target. I'm shooting bubble nebula, which is up over here. So now we just wait for it to get a little bit darker and I will set my uh, sequence parameters, get the guiding calibrated, get Meridian flip set, ready to go. And we just uh, let it do its thing. So to put it in perspective, here's what your eyes would technically be seeing right now. Over here is Sagittarius. Up above is Cygnus. Over there is Cassiopeia. Here's the surrounding area. This is looking through a night optical device. Whoops, otherwise known as night vision. There's Cygnus up here. Looking down, coming over here. There's the moon behind the trees. Sagittarius in the core of the Milky Way, and Tari is over there. And just looking around the neighborhood, it's pretty wild. Pretty wild. There's Cassiopeia. There's a jet flying. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So what you see right here is my guiding screen. These are all the little stars you see in the guide exposure through my guide camera in the little guide scope on top of my main imaging scope. So what I'm doing here in this part of the software or application is I'm setting the guiding calibration. So the whole ASI air, it's going through all of the algorithms, everything it's doing, sequencing, it's taking a bunch of little exposures and it's moving the mount ever so slightly each way to basically detect what my backlash is and everything and compensate for it. So here it's doing, I just did a quick little exposure just to, and I think actually this actually shows some of the star movement in it, just so you can see what it looks like when it's calibrating. And yep, there's bubble nebula inside the center. You can see the stars have slight trails on them. And that's because the guiding calibration is happening. So you can, when I take these exposures, you can essentially see the mount move around and do its thing, which I think is pretty cool. And here actually is a 600 second exposure of the bubble nebula. After the guiding calibration was finished, I decided to run a couple exposures and make sure that I'm not drifting, no star trails, no nothing. And it looks great. You can see that atrocious amp glow in the corner. That's because I'm using the 183MC Pro at the time still. And you can see little Northern Lagoon Nebula over there tucked inside the amp glow. Here's the guiding screen. So this is what my guiding scope is looking at after the calibration. You can see the little scale up there in the corner. And now I believe what I do here yeah, I'm going in here and I'm setting all my parameters. So this, I'm doing 600 seconds and I'm going to do 35 repeat exposures. So it's going to repeat 600 second exposures 35 times with filter one. You can see in the corner there, Meridian Flip is on, go to home position is on. So when the sequence is finished, it's going to automatically send the mount back to the home position and everything will be done, everything will be saved, won't have to touch a thing until I tear it apart for the night or decide to take darks and flats, which you can actually automate in ASI Air and you know, in this application, which is pretty awesome. I just have not used.
So at this time, it was 2.10 a.m. Uh, pitch black out, perfect astro dark, and we are 24 exposures in out of 35, and it's actually starting another 600 seconds, as you can see in there in the corner. I'm just going over the exposures, making sure everything looks good. Northern Lagoon still over there. Everything is looking tip-top shape.